What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A24 4G LTE that you might not know about. Now as always, if you end up wanting to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, Let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a feature called adaptive brightness. Now you may have your brightness at 100% at all times, but if you are trying to save a bit of battery or really just make your display as efficient as possible, adaptive brightness is always an option. So with this feature, you can of course get to it from the settings menu, but a quicker, more convenient way to do it is simply by swiping down twice from the top. So one, two. So like this, this is the quick menu right here. As you can see, there are a bunch of different features here. Below this, we got the brightness. So as you can see, it's currently at 100%. What you're going to want to do is hit the dots right here. This is going to take you to like a mini brightness menu. So you can change it. And then what you're going to want to do is toggle on adaptive brightness. And as you can see, it adjusted right away. Now I'm going to show you a couple different shortcuts you can use with the power key. So by default, if you double press the power key, it's going to go right to the camera. So definitely a cool shortcut here. And you can do this anywhere on your operating system. So if you're like on an app of some sort, again, double press the power key. There we go. And even when the display is locked. So let me do that real quick. So as you can see, it is locked. Let me use my non fingerprint scanner hand. And there we go. So as you can see, I didn't even have to unlock it, but keep in mind in case you're worried, this is not a shortcut to bypass your lock screen. Because as you can see here, if I try to do anything else, it is going to have you unlock the phone. But as cool as the camera shortcut is, we do have another option here. So to get to this, go to settings. From here, go to advanced features. So right here. Then from here, go to side key. And as you can see, again by default, double pressing the side key, which is again the power key right here. This is going to open the camera. You can also disable it. And then you can also have it open an app. So if we do this, you can select pretty much anything on your phone, including the flashlight, which is pretty cool. So let's do that. And now I'm going to double press the power key once more. And there we go. And keep in mind, if you have something that's like, say, maybe Snapchat, for example, and you try to use it on the lock screen. Again, this is not a shortcut to bypass the lock screen. So watch if I try to do it. It is going to have me unlock the phone again. So keep in mind, if you do want to open something right from the lock screen, the only option is the camera and I think the flashlight too. So yeah, the flashlight does work from the lock screen, but with any other app, you will have to unlock it. But definitely a cool quick shortcut if you want to get to something. I personally like to leave it at the camera, but it is of course up to you. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called one handed mode. Now you may have seen this on other phones before, but I feel like when it comes to Samsung, one handed mode is really the best on here. So first things first, we're going to want to actually enable it. So to do this, go to settings, go back to that one menu, advanced features. So again, it's all the way down here at the bottom, right here. Then from here, go to one handed mode, or you can just enable it here, but I'm going to show you all the settings for it. So let's go here. So as you can see by default, it is off. But if I turn it on, we got a couple different options here. So first of all, by default, one handed mode is activated by gesture. And if you're in gesture navigation, then of course, this is your only option, but you can also have it activated by a button. So gesture looks like this, just swipe down from right above the home button in button. As you can see here is double tapping the home button. Now you might be worried about accidentally activating it, but in my experience with either of these options, it doesn't really happen too often. So definitely keep that in mind. So let me show you what one handed mode looks like. So once it's enabled and you have your method selected, I'm going to go like this and we are now in one handed mode. So now you can use the phone like normal. And as you can see, it's a lot easier to use with one hand. You can also change the side. So if you're left handed, you can always use it like this. You can also resize it. So if you grab this corner now, it can be a little tricky, but let's see if I can do it. So there we go. Nope, that's the quick menu. Let me try this one more time. So as you can see, it's kind of like outside the corner here, but as you can see, you can resize it. So I'm going to make it a bit larger or a bit smaller. You can also move it a bit up or down. So you're going to want to grab onto this bar right here. Again, it can be a bit tricky, but let's see. So there we go. And then to get out of it, tap anywhere on the outside. 
And there we go. So yeah, one-handed mode is definitely a cool feature. And again, I honestly feel like Samsung really does it the best. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to disable your Google feed. Now, in case you don't know what it is, the Google feed is basically this news feed right here. And while some people might find it useful, for me personally, I feel like all I ever do with it is accidentally swipe onto it. So if you're like me and you never use it, let me show you how to disable it. So what you're going to want to do is press and hold your finger on a blank spot on your home screen. So like this. Then from here, go to settings. And then from here, right here where it says add media page to home screen. By default, as you can see, it is going to be on. If you go here, you can also change it to Samsung if you're logged into your Samsung account. But if you want to disable it, simply toggle it off. And now if we go back to the home screen, it's no longer going to pull up. Now I'm going to show you a feature called Dual Messenger. Now, to be fair, this feature is probably not nearly as useful as it once was, but basically what it's going to do is allow you to make a copy of an app like Snapchat, for example, so you can use two accounts at once. And I guess now that I think of it, it is mostly useful for Snapchat because with things like Facebook and Messenger and Instagram and all these other apps, you can easily log into multiple accounts at once anyway. But I guess the process of switching accounts on Facebook Messenger is kind of inconvenient, so I can understand it. But essentially for Dual Messenger, all you have to do is go to settings then from here go to advanced features and then from here dual messenger is right at the bottom as you can see these are the available apps so like i said before maybe not quite as useful as it was maybe a few years ago but as you can see there are at least a few apps you can use with it so definitely a nice option to have now I'm going to show you a feature called finger sensor gestures. So it's in the same menu, so we're just going to stay here. But in case you missed it, this is the advanced features menu. You get there from the main settings menu. So as you can see right here, settings, advanced features is right down here. Now with this feature, it's essentially going to allow you to open your notification center, which is this right here, in your quick menu, just by swiping on your fingerprint scanner. So pretty cool. Maybe not the most game-changing feature ever, but definitely a nice one to know about. So to get to this, from the advanced features menu, go to motions and gestures. And then from here, go to where it says finger sensor gestures. So as you can see, it is off by default, but if you toggle it on, now to get to your notification center, all you have to do is swipe down on the fingerprint scanner like this. And there we go. And if you swipe down one more time, it'll take you to the quick menu. And while we're in the motions and gestures menu, the next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called lift to wake. Now, this isn't really the most amazing feature ever either, but at the same time, I feel like it's something most phones have on by default. So if you are used to it and you're expecting it to be on on your phone, keep in mind that with the Samsung Galaxy A24 4G, it is here. You just have to activate it manually for some reason. So in the motions and gestures menu, in case you missed it, that's going to be settings, advanced features, motions and gestures and it is right here at the top. Pretty much the only thing besides finger sensor gestures that's not on by default. So if we turn it on, basically what this is gonna do is if you lock your display and then you pick your phone up, it is in theory gonna turn on. Now, for some reason when I'm recording these videos, probably because the camera is between me and the actual phone, so it's hard to realistically pick it up how you would normally. It doesn't always work for me, but I will say in real life when you're actually using the phone, don't worry, it will work pretty much every time, but let me see if I can demonstrate. So there we go, it actually worked this time. But as you can see, again, it's a pretty simple feature, but definitely a nice one to have. Now I'm going to show you how to change your display refresh rate. Now in case you don't know, with the Samsung Galaxy A24 4G, we are actually getting a 90Hz refresh rate, and this is basically going to make the movement on the screen a bit faster and smoother, making the phone feel a bit more premium to use. And with a 1080p AMOLED display, this is definitely going to give you a real nice premium experience, but some people might not really care that much about the refresh rate. I mean, it's a pretty arbitrary thing, so if you want your phone to feel as premium as possible, then it is a good thing to have on. But if you don't really care about that, it's probably not too noticeable anyway. So if you do want to save battery, you can turn it back to 60 hertz. To do this, go to settings, then from here, go to display, so right here, and then from this menu, go to motion smoothness. So if we go here, as you can see again by default, it will be set to high, which is 90 hertz. But if you want to change it to 60 hertz, hit standard, hit apply, and that's pretty much it. Now, again, it's not really an insane difference, so as you can see, it doesn't really look bad or anything, but I feel like at the same time, when it comes to how much battery you're really saving, it's not really that much of a difference either, so it really can go either way. Maybe you want it to be a bit 
slower for some reason. You can always change it to 60 hertz, but I feel like since the phone does have 90 hertz in, in my opinion, the battery difference is really not that much. You might as well just leave it, but of course, if you ever want to change it, the option is always there. Now I'm going to show you how to show or hide your battery percentage on the status bar. So as you can see up here, the battery percentage is here, which is pretty cool. You can see the phone right now is at 58% because I left it on a table for a few days, which I guess that shows how good this phone's battery actually is. Because if it were my iPhone or something, it would be pretty much dead by now. But regardless, I feel like while it can be nice to have this up here at all times, you might want to make this a little bit more minimalistic because after all, the status bar does have quite a few random things on it, especially when you count notifications and stuff like that. So if you do want to get rid of the battery percentage, all you have to do is go to settings. Then from here, go to battery and device care. So it's going to be right here. Then from here, go to battery. Then from this menu, go to more battery settings. And as you can see, by default, again, the battery percentage will be on, but if you want, you can toggle it off. And now it's going to look a bit more minimalistic. And keep in mind, if you do have it off like this, it is kind of nice because then it's not up here all the time. But at the same time, if you ever want to see the battery percentage, you can always just swipe down like this. And no matter what, it's always going to be here. So if you do like that more minimalistic look here, definitely something to think about. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is a few different multitasking features. So these are pretty cool and I feel like even though a lot of other phones have them, in my opinion, they are a bit nicer on Samsung. So you can do all of these by default, but to make things simpler, I'm going to go to the settings part first. So what you're going to want to do is go to settings. Then from here, go down to advanced features. So right here. And then from here, go to labs. So first thing I'm going to show you is how to use split screen. So as you can see here, you can turn on multi window for all apps. And this is basically going to enable split screen for everything. Now, in my experience, I haven't really noticed a difference with this, but in case there is some sort of app you use that doesn't have split screen on by default, this is going to make sure you can use it with pretty much everything. So now to get to split screen, what you're going to want to do is hit the recent apps button right here. Or if you're in gesture navigation, just go to recent apps somehow. So we're going to do this. Then from here, press and hold on the actual app itself and drop it either at the top or at the bottom. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to do this. Then from here, you can select your other app. So I'm going to do this one right here. So as you can see, we are now in split screen. Pretty straightforward. Also keep in mind, if you want to resize it, make one window larger and the other smaller, grab these dots right here and you can change it. And if you want one to take over, grab the dots one more time and slide it either all the way up or all the way down. So pretty simple. You can also do full screen and split screen view. So if you do this, it's basically gonna turn it into full screen. So essentially this means it's gonna hide the status bar and navigation bar. So let me show you real quick. So if I do this, as you can see, it is enabled and you can't see the status bar or the navigation bar. So pretty cool. And then we got pop-up view. So pop-up view is activated pretty much the same way. So the normal way without any kind of shortcut is simply by going to your recent apps, press and hold on the app itself, and drop it right here in the middle. And here's pop-up view, pretty cool. We got a few different controls. So this right here is gonna activate full screen. This turns it into split screen. This changes the opacity so you can make it more transparent. This right here turns it into a little bubble. So let me do that. So there we go. Pretty cool. This pops it back out. So if you want to leave pop-up mode and go back to normal, there we go. And then finally, the X is going to close it all together. So definitely really easy to use and pretty self-explanatory, but we also got a few shortcuts. So swipe for pop-up. If you do this to get to pop-up, instead of going to your recent apps and all that, all you have to do is swipe down from the corner. So right here, so like this. And there we go. And then we also got one for split screen. So if we turn this on to get to split screen, all you have to do is take two fingers, swipe up from the bottom like this. And there we go. But this concludes my tips and tricks video for the Samsung Galaxy A24 4G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.